range extender is going to shut off any second now. And there it goes. We just ran out of gas. We're not going to make it. We're not going to make it, man. The whole screen is orange right now saying that there is no range left. We are going to end up on the side of the road, guys. Like that's not it's not a matter of if it's it's absolutely when what is going on ladies and gentlemen welcome back to auto auction rebuilds i love how deep my voice is when i first wake up i really do i wish i <laughs> wish my voice would stay this deep all the time i don't know what it is but when i wake up my voice is like kind of bassy got a little bit of got a little bit of bass to it you know what i mean and then throughout the day it's like hey i mean welcome back to auto auction Re <laughs> i am in uh i honestly don't know where i'm at uh I'm, I'm at a I'm at a very cheap hotel on the side of the road because I could not keep my eyes open on the road last night. Uh, we're on our way back to Oklahoma from California. That's what we're doing today. So unlike the other videos where we took this every step along the way, uh, we're not doing that today. We are booking it. We're going to get back to the house. We're going to figure out how much this trip cost for gas and electricity, how many total miles. We're just going to get home. But I will record anything that's interesting. Now, we got 130. We got 136 miles of range uh, on electricity. I'm trying my hardest to get back on electric only as much as possible. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to show how cheap we can make this trip with electricity only. Um, 136 miles of electric range. We've got 143 miles to go to get to Needles, California, from wherever the heck I'm at right now. Uh, so let's get on the road. Let's see if we can make it on electricity only. So this is one of those times where it's a good point to make a video. We are about 22 miles from Needles, California, which is on the border of Arizona and California. It's a long haul between charging stations uh, to get out here. It really is. It pushes the limits of the car, at least the electric range. Um, so we ran out of battery, which it, it happens. That's that's normal. I'm, I'm not too concerned about that. We've got plenty of gasoline. The issue is these mountainous hills going up. Um, it uses a lot more energy. Remember, this car does not drive off of gasoline. This car will only drive off of electricity. So the generator has to produce enough electric to drive the car up these hills. The problem with that is at 70, 75 miles an hour, the generator cannot produce enough electricity to keep the car going up the hills. Therefore, you have to put the car in what's called Eco Pro Plus. You have to drop your speed to 56 miles an hour, set the cruise, and that will keep your battery at enough charge where you can easily get up and down the hills. Unfortunately, you know, it sucks being stuck at 55 miles an hour for 20 miles. Not to mention, we have no cell service out here either. No data, no emergency phones, nothing. Now, the truth of the matter is there's really not any traffic here. So there's really not an issue on I-40 uh, going 55 miles an hour, 56 miles an hour. I'm sorry. Um, it's not bothering me at all. We're sipping gasoline, which is great. And uh, we're managing to keep our energy stored up so we can make it up these hills. So really, no complaints. I guess the main thing to remember about a car like this, which is why most people won't buy one, is it's a car that makes you think. You have to really think about your trip. You have to plan things out. You have to expect the unexpected. And you've got to be very, very conscious about, conscious? Conscious about your range. You got to keep an eye on your energy usage and make sure that you adjust your speed, adapt your electrical usage uh, based on the type of terrain you're going through, weather conditions, etc. Like things like turning off the radio, unplugging your phone from the charger. Uh, believe it or not, these little things can actually add up to big energy savings. So while it's not a car for most people, I find it entertaining. I get pretty bored on long drives like this. I can tell you this, this car doesn't let me get bored. I'm, I'm constantly paying attention to everything. And it's uh, kind of part of the excitement, part of the fun for me. Now, another thing that I figured out is you can take advantage of these steep grades coming down the mountains. You can regen a ton of electricity just kind of floating down here. Uh, I really don't mind setting the cruise at 56 miles an hour and co coasting kind of, you know, with cruise on down this hill, regening a ton of juice 
And then when it's time to go back up a hill, if you want to, you could play with it. I wouldn't do 75 when you're out of range, but you could definitely do 65 miles an hour. I've been playing with it and I've been doing it. I can keep up about 65 miles an hour going up the hills just fine without draining too much battery and then coming down the hills, put it down to 56 miles an hour, drop it in Eco Pro Plus mode and really rejuice the battery, man. And then take it out of Eco Pro Plus, put it in Eco Pro going up the hills. You could do 65 or so just fine. We're, we're doing great guys. Uh, I have no worries at all. We are now 14 miles away from needles. And this is one of the biggest gaps in electrical chargers uh, that I've experienced from uh, Barstow, California to Needles, California is, it's a little tricky. The next one is Needles to Flagstaff. But if you play it right, you can do it easily, man, easily. Like you don't even have to stress about it. You can make it no problem. Once you get through Flagstaff, man, it is smooth sailing all the way back to Oklahoma City. Well, we made it. The problem is my phone has no service, none. Um, I've even turned off cellular, turned on airplane, right? And turned it back. And I still have no service. And that's not right because I've been here before and I had full bars here. Great. As far as gasoline goes, you're not going to be able to see it. Well, maybe you will. We have 83 miles left. All right. We barely sipped any gas at all getting here. We still have a little bit of juice. And as you can see, we are at the charging station. So, oh, I've got bars. Yes. Yes. Whoo. I was really worried about my phone not having any service out here in the middle of nowhere. This is one of the longest stretches. The next one is from here to Flagstaff. That's going to be a bear. Once we're there, though, smooth sailing the rest of the way. So I've put 1,700 plus miles on this car. I've been in it for probably uh, 30 hours. I don't know, something like that now. And and so far, I kind of wanted to, it's kind of an intermission time for me. So I figured I'd record a little little clip for you guys. Uh, it's been super comfortable, fun to drive, and I thought I would blend right in in California. I had people staring at it all the time. Now, maybe that's a good thing and maybe not. I'm sure some people are laughing at it. Some people think it's really cool. Some people think it's really cute, and some people think it's hideous. Uh, the, the, the thing for me is it just gets people's attention. Whether you love it, you hate it, you like it, you don't, it doesn't matter. As long as it makes you look twice at it, hey, that's, that makes me happy. It's such a unique and interesting car. Um, now, 224 miles is what we need to get from here to Flagstaff. I'm not gonna lie, that's that's a little scary. That's a little sketchy. Um, 224 miles between gas and electric range. We're gonna have to definitely top up here, which means we're gonna be sitting here for a little while. I need every mile I can get. We'll have to stop at a gas station, unfortunately, and get gas. Gasoline here, this car takes premium, is almost $6 a gallon in Needles, California. And this is like, we're just, we're literally on the border. Needles is right on the border, leaving California, but I kind of need gas now, so we'll just have to pay that premium and uh, and deal with it. I'm gonna see if I can get a hold of, uh, of uh, Joseph, because he's somewhere out here, and if he can be here in a reasonable amount of time, we'll, uh, we'll see if we can meet Joseph from Instagram. He's got that Atomic F-Sport, uh, that we posted on Instagram the other day. So let, let's see if we can meet up with them. All right, guys, as promised, we have Jacob here. I'm kidding, Joseph, his name is Joseph. <laughs> What's up, Joseph, you do the elbow bump? Yeah. All right, and we're both wearing masks. My voice sounds really clear. This is a great mask I have on. It's got super good filtration. Like, I'm gonna have to put a link in the description for you guys to buy one. <laughs> anyway, anyway, he's here with his Atomic LC500. <laughs> I had a feeling we were going to do that. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right. It's not quite an LC500, but this was was this actually an F Sport when you bought it or did you just yeah, put it, all the F Sport it, stuff on it? No, it's all original. Well, okay. It, it is F Sport. Okay, it is an F Sport. Are they all F Sports cuz I don't know my Lexuses. No. It's so just, it's an option package. Yeah, it's it's the it's just the F Sport package. You okay. Know, they got staggered tires or 18-inch staggered tires. Um, you got the F Sport interior. Oh, the gauge cluster. That's it's that's another thing because it's got the gauge cluster that moves side to side. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this car's got that. Okay. It's actually 
Um, yeah, LF, it was inspired by the Lexus LFA, that supercar. Oh, yeah, yeah, the car that never actually made it. They built 500 of them. Wow. They were selling for more than what they were asking for in brand new. Okay, all right. You know, they were starting at like 350 or 400 or somewhere. I should have got one. Yeah, now you could see them for like well over half a million dollars. Wow. And they're like 2012, so they're like what, nine years old now or something? I'm glad this guy pulled up and blocked the uh, the charging station with his loud diesel while we're here filming. Um, anyway, uh, let's go over the car. Hopefully you guys can hear. That was rather rude. Um, so this has the 5 liter V8, right? 2.5 V6. Oh, 2.5, right. Right. That's what I meant. It's the last, That's what I meant. Year, last year of the 2.5. V6 for the IS. All right, look, I, and the, the color is? Atomic Silver. Atomic Silver, and your Instagram is? Uh, atomic, atomic, atomic F Sport. Atomic F Sport. Mm -hmm. So go check out Joseph at Atomic F Sport. Take a look at this, I love these wheels, man, and I know you're changing them. It's just, um, I'm just changing the finish. Okay, 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 you're changing the finish of the yeah, wheels. Black. Okay, I, I really like this color, man. I like the color of the wheels a lot. And this atomic silver, mm -hmm. it's not quite silver. It's kind of got a gold tint to it. I mean, it's silver, but to me it looks a, just a tad bit more on the gold. So there's there's actually two different colors that I saw that I wanted before this car. Uh, I think it's silver lining, which is a lighter silver. Right. And then there was nebula gray. And I was looking at those colors, debating between one or the two, but then I was like, wait, there's another silver color that I've seen that's not, that's kind of in between the two, like, yeah. you know, nebula gray or the... Uh, and it was atomic. Like, yeah, the atomic, atomic silver, yeah. 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 And I like the F-Sport exhaust down here too. It's real subtle. I like this diffuser you just put on as well. That's a, that's a still-in diffuser. I just installed that like two nights ago. Very nice. I like this. And this, this exhaust, it's so subtle, but it just really completes the look of the back end. Actually, I oh, think yeah. your diffuser completed the look of the back end, but that exhaust is absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. I love this car. I really do. Yeah, I would absolutely own one of these. What, what, what does one of these cost? Um, right now, you can probably pick one up for definitely under twenty grand. Under twenty? Are you kidding me? You want to trade? I got a, I got a, I got a car okay. under twenty grand. I'll swap you. And how many charges is it going to take to get to California? I mean, was, uh, <laughs> gas is cheap. I mean, electric is cheaper than gas. But what's your time worth? That's the question. I'll, what, wait, I'll, what, wait, for, I'll wait for a Lucid. <laughs> You're waiting for a Lucid. Hey, Lucid. Speaking of Lucid, <laughs> this is the guy that told me about you. So if you want to hook him up with at least a discount. I got a thousand shares of Churchill Capital. Oh, okay. Okay. So hook this guy up. They probably, they haven't even seen my Instagram post yet. So I doubt they're going to hook you up, but hook him up. And if you're going to hook him up, I will trade this in and let me at least borrow one of your new cars, man. I'll give it back. Just let me drive it across the country a couple times and try it out and I'll give it back. Oh, yeah. All right, guys, we're going to get out of here. I got to get back on the road. I think we're going to stop at Jack in the Box real quick. And uh, where are we? Needles, California? Needles, yeah, California. Needles. All right. Home of uh, Spike, Snoopy's cousin, I think. Oh, Snoopy's cousin. All right. We're going to get out of here, get something to eat. I'm going to get back on the road and see how far we can get before this day is over. So we are driving through the mountains. We're near Flagstaff. And we've got a, we've got a problem on our hands. Uh, the phone is telling me we have 10 miles to our destination. The car is telling me I have nine total miles of range. Battery is gone. Gasoline is almost gone. We've got nine miles left. And the temperature is getting colder, which of course will somewhat affect range. But uh, <laughs> normally it's not a big deal. But uh, when you're already out of juice, it could be a huge deal. Um, as you can see, I'm going 50 miles an hour. All right, and of course, yeah, you've got some people that fly past you. Total driving miles, eight. <laughs> uh, now it's flashing yellow, so it's letting me know that we're in trouble. Total distance, 9.4. Yeah, we're, uh, we're in trouble now. I'm not totally stressed out about this. Yes, I'm going 50. All right. 
and I'm in Eco Pro Plus mode, so I'm regening as much as possible when we go down these mountains. Um, I ran into this same problem the last time I came from uh, Williams, which is the Flagstaff area, uh, down to Needles. We made it by the skin of our teeth. And uh, looks like it's going to be that way again. Man, it's saying six miles of range now, and we still have 8.7 miles to go. I could have avoided this by stopping and getting gas in one of the last towns. And now I'm considering uh, hindsight's 2020. I should have. I should have stopped and got gas in one of those towns behind us. Um, I had plenty of opportunities to get gas on the way here, but I thought, nah, let's chance it and see if we make it. And uh, six miles, I've got 8.4 to go, and I've got six miles of juice. Thankfully, traffic is uh, really messed up right now, as you can see. Come on, guy, get over. Or don't. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, I can hear the range extender just uh, working its little heart out, man. Uh, I'm going to keep it kind of slow. Thankfully, we have all these trucks that are having troubles getting down the mountain as well. Hopefully, we regen a little bit because we currently have five miles left, eight miles to go. Let's see if we make it. All right, guys, I know it's hard to see, but we just ran out of range on the range extender. Range extender says zero miles, and it's going to shut off here in just a minute. Uh, and we're, we're not here. Yep. Range extender is going to shut off any second now. And there it goes. We just ran out of gas. Uh. We're still driving. Okay. I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, we are out of gas. It said we're out of battery, but somehow I'm still driving um, 50 miles an hour, but I've still got three miles to go. So I, I, I don't, I don't, we're not going to make it. We're not going to make it, man. The whole screen is orange right now saying that there is no range left. This is the first time this has happened. I, I'm seriously sketched out right now. I'm in the middle of nowhere. There is nothing but snow and ice everywhere. But somehow we're still cruising at 50. 2.7 miles left. Cross your fingers. I don't know how we're still moving. We've got uh, one mile, seven tenths of a mile to our exit. 2.7 miles to our destination. We're not going to make it. We're not going to make it. I might make it to the exit, but there's no way we're going to make it. Use the right lane to take exit 161. Yeah, to oh my goodness. Toward I <laughs> loop. We are going to end up on the side of the road, guys. Like, that's not, it's not a matter of if, it's, it's absolutely when. We've got an exit coming up here in three tenths of a mile. It's a hill, it looks like. We're not going to make it. We're absolutely not going to make this. I'm going 50. <sighs> I should have got gas. All I had to do, all I had to do was get gas. I should have got gas back then, uh, back there when I had the opportunity. I should have. Turn right. Okay. This is this is real deal right here. This isn't like scripted. This isn't like hey ha ha ha. I've got a crew behind me that's got gas cans. This is like. We are so screwed. At the stop sign, use the right lane. Oh my goodness, 1.7 miles to our destination. I just need a gas t uh, a, a gas station. Right. Sorry guys, I'm not stopping. There's a gas station. Oh my god, oh my god. Two miles, turn left on huh. 7th Street. There's a gas station right in front of me. Are you kidding me? We're gonna make it! We're gonna make it. We're gonna make it. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh. 
Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Turn right onto West Ridge. Oh my! We <laughs> we made it. We made it. <laughs> oh, it is it is freezing outside. Charge status low, high voltage battery. Charge high voltage battery to ensure vehicles ready to drive and prevent damage. I don't care, man, I don't care. We made it to a gas station. This pump only card reader is not working. <laughs> okay, all right guys, let's get some gas and let's find out if it will fire back up. Outside temperature, 32 degrees. <laughs> we are full of gas and the battery is charging. Uh, I'm not faking it, man. I am that excited right now. Um, I really, we have ice on the ground, guys. Like there is, there's snow, ice, slush. It is freaking cold. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let the range extender, the extender do what it's made to do. I'm gonna park and I'm gonna give it just a minute to uh, charge up that battery. And we're gonna continue on our way uh, 1.3 miles to the charging station. Um, I couldn't make this up. I couldn't make this up. I just, I couldn't. You saw it right here. It's it's 100% legit. Now, of course, I did this because I saw that we were going to make it by the skin of our teeth. And I thought, okay, that'd be good content, right? It would be fun content to show, oh, will we make it? The suspense. Um, unfortunately, I, I didn't expect that we would actually run completely out. I didn't. Uh, the range looked like we would just make it. Everything looked like we could just make it here. Um... And I was wrong. I was very wrong. Um, the reason I couldn't charge is because there's no other charging station between uh, here, which is Williams, and uh, Needles. There is none. Now, they are building a new one right in between in, I think, Kingman. And once that's built, the trip will be no issue at all. It's one of those things where EVs are still progressing, range is getting better, and the grid, as they call it, is also progressing as well. They're putting more stations up so you can charge in more places. It's, it's growing pains. Uh, was it worth it? Yeah, man, I told you guys. I told you guys, this car is keeping me on my feet, man. The, <laughs> let me tell you, it's not for everybody. We could have just been walking. And that's assuming we didn't have cell service. Well, we, we got we got some cell service here, so I probably could have just called AAA. But guys, <laughs> let's get to the charger and let's plug this bad boy in and get it some juice so we can get back on the road. We made it. I can't believe it. We made it, though. Whew. <laughs> that was a... Uh, uh, that may have been a little much um, to try to get a... To try to get a... Uh, a reaction from my audience i think uh, i'm gonna have to uh, <laughs> to be a little more careful next time guys let's go ahead and plug this thing in let's get it charged up let's get back on the road all right guys uh, we were dead empty meaning we didn't even have five percent normally there's five percent in the battery when you get to a charging station we had none um battery was done it was at zero literally zero percent first time that has happened to me and i am happy to report that in 25 minutes we have reached 67 percent charge and i don't need any more than that that gives me about 60 miles of electric range i'm going to flagstaff which is only 40 miles away so i'm going to be using the heater it is now below like i said earlier now it is below freezing um, i do have the headlights on we're going to get to flagstaff we'll go ahead and charge it up to uh i don't know 80 or so percent there it shouldn't take more than probably 15 20 minutes once we're there so let's get on the road to flagstaff and hope we don't have any more issues all right we're back one problem averted and and we've run into another one we we're in i don't know winslow arizona we need to get to gallup new mexico that is a long drive in other words i don't have a lot of confidence in this one that is 185 miles from here to there there are zero chargers in between Winslow, Arizona, and Gallup, New Mexico. None. Absolutely none. So I have no choice but to make it from here to there. So I'm going to try to do something um, a little bit different this time. Usually, because I'm trying to save money, and basically, uh, 
I, the IRS gives me what whatever the, the rate is now, 54 cents a mile. Great. 52 cents a mile, whatever it is currently for 2021, the IRS gives me that as a tax deduction. Well, the car is currently costing me, as far as fuel is concerned, five cents a mile. Okay, there's not really much maintenance to speak of on this car, so I am winning right now. Right now I am winning, um, but I've been trying to keep it as cheap as possible by using electricity all the time, and unfortunately, because we've got 185 miles to go, I cannot do that this time. This time we're gonna have to make sure the tank is full and we're gonna have to start the trip running on gasoline. Now, when I say running on gasoline, remember this car does not have a gasoline engine that powers the wheels. It has a gasoline two-cylinder 650cc scooter engine that powers a generator. All right, so big difference. You can't use gas to drive per se the gas drives the generator, the generator powers the battery, the battery drives the motor, the motor drives the wheels. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you get that. Um, so we're gonna have to start out running on gas and that way if we, hopefully that way we can keep the battery charged mostly full and we can stop when necessary, fill up the gas tank again and hopefully we have enough juice in the battery because it is night now. We are using headlights and everything. And I'm sorry, guys, it is well below freezing. I'm definitely using the heater. So we're going to start this thing off of gasoline, and we're going to hope that we can maintain a reasonable charge on the battery. And we are going to make our, I think this is the last big, big, big one from uh, Winslow to Gallup, New Mexico. So we'll be crossing the state line. I'm looking so forward to seeing Amarillo because I honestly think I've been driving since 9 o'clock this morning, and it's like 10 o'clock at night. I think Amarillo is probably where we're gonna call tonight a night. Well, it's a brand new day. It is, uh, I don't even know, it's Wednesday. It's when, that means the uh, the Caprice and the Z4 should be going up for sale. Not to worry, I'm gonna be doing a video very soon about the sale of all of the cars, how much they all sold for, my experience with IAA selling cars and everything. I wanna do a whole video dedicated to that, but is Wednesday, March 17th. We started this journey on the, uh, what, I don't even remember. Was it the 13th? I don't, I don't even remember when this whole video series began. But anyway, it's the 17th. <clears throat> it's 10, 19 in the morning. I just woke up. And uh, I'm tired. Like, today I'm tired. Uh, I, think, I think I'm finally getting fatigued from this trip, man. But... Um, I am in the Quality Inn and Suites, and this is in, honestly, I have no idea where I'm at, Grants, yeah, Grants, New Mexico. Um, I'm kind of in a valley here. I almost couldn't find a hotel, which was kind of crazy. Uh, I started out at the Holiday Inn Express, and they didn't look busy or packed at 3 in the morning, and they said they were filled to capacity. And then I went to the Days Inn by Wyndham grants and uh they too said nope no rooms available but if i had had a reservation they would have had a room available so i don't i don't know what the, i don't know i said well then did somebody not show up because i'll take the reservation they said no we can't sell your room so i'm at the quality inn the room is tilted it slants um, depending on where you walk and as you walk that direction the floor shakes which is a little sketchy considering I am on the second floor. I usually only stay at Marriott Bonvoy uh, hotels, but they don't have any out here. And I was so exhausted at three in the morning, I had to stop. So um, I just found what I could find. The crazy thing is I had a reservation at a Marriott Bonvoy in uh, Albuquerque, which is, I don't know, an hour or two from here. Uh, I just, I couldn't drive any further. I was physically exhausted. It was unsafe. I had to cancel my reservation there. That hotel was $88. I paid $80 for this one that has a slanted room and a shaking floor. So, yeah. Anyway, enough about that. Today is the day we're going to get home. Let's get the rest of the way. I've driven well over 2,000 miles now. Today's the day. Let's end this trip, and then we'll go over the car, the mileage, the cost, and uh, all of that good stuff.
But before we do that, I got to give a big shout out and thank you to the entrepreneur man from, from California. He hooked me up. We got to talk and I was telling him how I've been trying to get my stepson a PS5 since Christmas and I can't get one. I mean, I could. I'm just not going to. I'm not going to pay $1,200 for a, for a stupid game system. That's not going to happen. But he just happened to be uh, in possession of a brand new PS5. And he said, man, I'll sell it to you for retail. And I was like, really? Thank you. So he sold me this for $560. I bought an extra controller. It's in the car. He sold me that for $60. Bucks. Everything's brand new, still sealed. And you can see the tape is still sealed right there. It's got the got the pickup slip and everything on it. It's, it's a legitimate deal. Uh, Kevin's a legitimate dude, man. Um, so no concerns there. Got a PS5, man. I'm so excited to finally have something that uh, I, I honestly thought it'd be next year or so before these things would finally be in stock enough to, to grab one. So, Kevin, the entrepreneur, thank you, man. You guys go check out the entrepreneur on YouTube. I have a link in the description. And uh, give him a shout-out, man. And... Uh, subscribe to him i'd appreciate it well this this is familiar I, I it's like i'm having deja vu from albuquerque new mexico all over again i've got 70 miles to amarillo amarillo by morning up from san antone anyway it's 70 miles to, to uh to amarillo I've been driving at 80. All right, I'm ready to go home, guys. I'm not BSing. I'm, I am ready to go home. I've been in this car for like 44 hours in, in five days. All right, I have spent over an entire work week in this car. It's going to take me three hours to get to Amarillo. Three hours to go 70 miles because traffic is sitting here not moving. So, assuming this is correct... And it's a two-hour delay going this way. And it was a three-hour delay going through Albuquerque. That is five hours I had to sit in the car in standstill traffic. And then you got these guys right here. Why pull over on the side of the road where you are blocking a shoulder for emergency crews to get through? I can't tell you in Albuquerque how many police, fire, and rescue people I saw using that lane to get through this gridlock traffic to help the, the people that were involved in that accident. And then you get semi trucks that pull over and block the whole intersection because they don't want to wait. So they just pull over and, you know, he unbuckled, got out of his truck. He's chilling. But if, a, if police or fire want to get through there, they got to go around him now. That's not cool, man. I got a lot of respect for truck drivers. Let me make that very clear. I got massive respect for truck drivers being able to do what they do all day, every day, getting stuff that we need to us, putting themselves at risk, being away from their families. Major respect for truck drivers. But right right there, that I can't, I got no respect for that, man. You're blocking a lane that could be used for emergency vehicles. Anyway, enough of the rant. Um, I guess we'll come back when we finally make it to Amarillo. All right, guys, I made it home and now it's time to go over some numbers. Um, 3,000 miles, let's start with that. 3,000 miles. I left Oklahoma on the 11th, I returned on the 17th. The 17th at three o'clock in the morning, I missed, I was really hoping to get home the evening of the 16th, but I got home about three o'clock in the morning on the 17th, so close enough for me, man. The trip was a huge success for me. I had a wonderful time. I met uh, Sean up at Insurance Auto Auctions up there in uh, North Hollywood. Loved their yard, man, and really enjoyed his company as well. Really cool dude. Introduced me to a few people around there. I ran into Kevin, the entrepreneur. Got to hang out with him and have a good time. Go hang out around LA and Beverly Hills and uh, yeah, 90210. <laughs> we had a good time. Santa Monica, really, really fun trip. But at the end of the day, you know, the, the, the trip is great, but let's go over some numbers because a lot of people are wanting to know how much did it cost me to charge my car? I think you're going to be very, very surprised. I drove 3,000 miles. I have been in that car for over 45 hours thanks to about four hours of traffic jams, uh, 40 east and 40 west. I have spent an entire work week with overtime in that car. So to make this trip happen, to bring this video content to you guys, was it was a big deal for me. So I really hope 
you guys like the video. If you do, hit the thumbs up button because I put a lot into this time and money. All right, are you ready? Electricity, grand total, $127.19 for electricity. Unfortunately, I had to use a little bit of gas, man. Um, that sucks, but that's what the range extender is there for. It's for those times where you've got a greater distance between point A and point B then you have energy, okay? And that range extender comes in handy. Gas came out to a whopping, mind-blowing, staggering $72.81. Yes, $72.81 to drive 3,000 miles. Now, total, we've got a total of, what does it come out to be? Uh, about 200 bucks, about $200. I think, actually, it comes out to, uh, yeah, 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 I don't, I, $200, okay? Let's just call it $200. Actually, is it $200? It is $200. It's $200 even. I'm doing the math in my head, and I'm like, ah, it's around here, and right here on paper. $200 to drive 3,000 miles, and it's very important to remember that I was in a three-hour uh, traffic jam in Albuquerque heading west. Okay, uh, 40 West, three hours I sat in traffic. On a gasoline car, you'd be sitting there just burning gas. Uh, with the electric car, it's almost like it's not even running. So it didn't use any range at all while I sat for three hours. All the way back, I sat for over two hours in another traffic jam on the border of Oklahoma, or sorry, on the border of New Mexico and Texas. More than two hours sitting there as well. So I've got over five hours of just kind of idle time there. And it cost me 200 bucks. Now for comparison, what would that have cost another super efficient um, car? Uh, take your pick. Any car that gets 35 miles a gallon uh, for the same 3,000 mile trip would come out to about $260. So I saved about $60 on one trip. And I know you're probably thinking that that doesn't sound like a whole lot. You know, $60 isn't a whole lot. Well, the difference between $200 and $260 on a 3,000 mile trip is actually, that's pretty huge. That's pretty huge. That was only 3,000 miles. I saved $60 in 3,000 miles. Now, let's say, I don't know, how many miles you drive a year? 12? Okay, so take $60 and times that by four and you'd save $240 a year. Yeah, $240 a year in savings by using the EV versus a traditional 35 mile per gallon gas car. Now, that may not be worth it to some. In fact, it may not be worth it to most people and I can't entirely disagree with you. It's personal preference, man. I'm not gonna get mad at you if you don't wanna go out tomorrow and buy yourself an i3. Personally, I love the little car. I love the little car, the instant torque, the driving. And you would think after 40 plus hours, uh, especially within like a five day period, 40 plus hours, you would think I would be very sore, my back, my legs, my, you know, um, I'm not, I'm really not. That car is, I cannot, I, I can't put into words how comfortable it is. It rides and handles very, very well. The instant torque makes it a lot of fun in the, yeah, you, in, in the curves and everything, man. The car is a blast. There was one time where I had a trucker that was kind of harassing me, flashing his brights. He wouldn't leave me alone. He wouldn't get off of me. I ended up getting the little car up to 95, and I think that's where it maxes out. Um, I couldn't get it over 95 miles an hour, but I was, I was able to get up fast enough that that trucker was gone, and I didn't have to deal with him anymore. Now, uh, if anybody's interested... What did the trip cost me total? I had to sit here and go through uh, one bank card and two credit cards to figure out how much this trip cost. And for a week, five days, you know, five or six days, really it wasn't bad. You're talking about this includes electricity, this includes gas, food, several hotels, and it came out to a total of $1,386.33. So, 13, call it $1,400 is what it costs me all in to make this series of videos for you guys. That goes from the, the Oklahoma to California, the two IAA walkarounds, one with some 
well, okay, they both really, they both of them have some really high-end cars. Um, and then this video, which is the return to Oklahoma from California. Uh, four videos, and it cost me four, $400, $1,400 to produce those for you. So uh, not bad, not bad. Hopefully the video views outweigh the cost. And uh, if you guys want to do this again sometime, I'm not sure... I will drive the car again. Now, I'm going to I'm going to say this. It's got nothing to do with the car at all. The comfortability is there. The car is reliable. Now I've done it. I did it there and I did it back. I know where to go. I know where to stop. I know how to work the range extender just right to get me extra uh, mileage when I need it. I've got this thing figured out so I could do this in my sleep now. In fact, part of the drive back, I did do it in my sleep, but we're not going to talk about that. Um, <laughs> I could do this again and again. The thing is, it's just such a long drive, and that it doesn't matter what car you're in. I don't care if you're in a McLaren 600 LT or uh, if you're in a, a Lamborghini Urus. It does. It doesn't matter what you're driving, um, unless you're willing to do 120 miles the whole way there. Um, Let's just be real. You're going to be doing 75, 80 miles an hour for 3,000 miles. It's it's a bit time consuming. So maybe if you guys want to see more content of going and seeing these much higher end cars, uh, IAA is more than willing to do that. Um, and I'm willing to do it. I think next time, though, I've got so many airline miles, I may just fly. It'd be so much quicker, so much easier, cheaper to um, fly there uber to the places i need to or rent a toro car to get around while i'm there parking garages that was like 44 dollars a day uh, i spent over a hundred dollars in parking garages absolutely crazy absolutely crazy i think it may just be cheaper um in an area like that to just use uber x to get where i need to go but i think we could do it cheaper much more efficiently um which would work a lot better for the channel. So if you guys wanna see more of this stuff, you gotta hit that thumbs up button, man, and share the video. Definitely share the video. How many people are driving 3,000 miles the first week of ownership of a brand new car that they've never experienced before? Like this, this was crazy. This was crazy. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't really know all of the features, the, the aspects of the car yet. So to do something like this with no real knowledge of how to use the car was, it was kinda crazy, but, um. Now I did it. You know, I drove from Oklahoma to L.A. I drove from L.A. to North Hollywood to Beverly Hills. I've driven to Santa Monica and I drove back to Oklahoma all within one week and all within one week of ownership of the 2018 BMW i3 with the range extender. Like I said, guys, no complaints on the car. Hopefully this answered a lot of your questions about was it comfortable? Is it fast? No, it's not 95 miles an hour about tops out. Is it quick? Yeah, the instant torque is pretty quick. Um, it definitely gets out of its own way with no trouble at all. Um, reliability, other than the one time where the check engine light came on and the range extender didn't want to work when it was sub-freezing in snow and ice, yeah, that was a problem, but I was able to clear the codes and bring the range extender back to life, uh, and I haven't had another problem with it since. So no issues really with reliability or anything else. Stay tuned because we're gonna do more on the car later on down the road. I think we've, we've done enough videos on the i3 for a while now. So um, unless we take it down to get it ceramic coated and paint corrected, uh, I don't think we're gonna be bringing a whole lot more content on the i3 for now. But uh, definitely thumbs up the video, share the video, comment your thoughts down below. Subscribe to the channel if not currently subscribed. Don't forget you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram, Auto Auction Rebuilds. Down below the video is Teespring. Teespring, they have a lot of my merch. We've got phone cases, we've got t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, men's, women's, unisex. We've got masks. We, I mean, we got everything, guys. So just go down there. Check it out. If you see something you like, pick it up. It helps support the channel. I appreciate it. Till next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all very soon in the next one.